Are you dying to play the most infamous game of the year, but you don't have a high-end PC, and you don't have Stadia, but you do have a Google Chromecast and an Xbox controller? Stick around and I'll show you how to play this brand new game on a $50 dongle right here on Monroe World. Stick around. All right, let's get Cyberpunk 2077 running on the Google TV. You're going to need a couple things. First, we're going to go ahead and pair up your Xbox One controller. Go to Settings. Go down to Remotes and Accessories and pair the remote. Hold down the little syncing button on the top of your Xbox One controller. You'll see the Xbox Wireless Controller appear. Go ahead and select that, and we're going to pair it up. Now it's important to note not all Xbox One controllers have Bluetooth capabilities. If you look at the description, I will send you a link to one on Amazon that is an Xbox One controller that does have the Windows 10 Bluetooth compatibility, and it's not that badly priced if you don't already have one. All right, so now we're all paired up, and I'm actually going to use the uh, wireless remote right now to navigate through Google TV's menus. How great is this? Yeah, it works great. Okay, next up we need the GeForce Now app. No, not the NFL football app. We need the GeForce Now app. So it's simple enough. It's odd that Google TV does not have a Stadia app, but it does have a GeForce Now app, which are competitive products. Only Google owns Stadia and NVIDIA Here's owns Nvidia GeForce. GeForce Now on the Google Play Strange, Store. but true. So we're going to go ahead and install this GeForce Now. And we're going to assume that you already have at least a free account. I am using the Founders Package, which is $5 a month, but it is possible to do this without the need of having a paid account, but you don't get server priority, you don't get ray tracing. It's just important to note that when I'm showing you Cyberpunk here in GeForce Now, I am using the Founders Pack. I do have ray tracing turned on, so if you want to see exactly the same results, you'll have to do the same. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and log myself in. It's pretty straightforward, just like anything else. You'll get a uh, you'll get a URL, QR code you can scan, and I'm taking care of all of this on my phone, so you won't see anything actually on the screen here. But I'm using my phone to go ahead and get logged in, and voila, I am in. Now I've previously used uh, Cyberpunk 2077 on this account, so it appears in my library. A little bit of setup here for you. Now, what makes GeForce Now better than Stadia? In my opinion, one, it's backed by NVIDIA, which I trust a little bit more than I trust Google. And uh, it also gives you access to games you already own. So if you already have Steam games, you play games, uh, uh, in my case, GOG.com games, all of those games can be played without any additional purchases. Stadia makes you buy the game on the platform. These are all games that I own already on Steam. Why should I pay Google more money to play games I already own? There's Cyberpunk 2077. Now, remember, folks, I mean, I know this seems silly to go over this. First off, notice I'm on 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. If I were to use a Ethernet adapter, I could do so much better. But this works really, really well all the same, so it's going to check this connection. And I am definitely playing on wireless and I'm playing with an Xbox controller, right? It's exactly like I'm on a PC hooked up to my TV. How great is that? And I get the benefit of all of the NVIDIA backbone, the NVIDIA infrastructure, all that good stuff. Yeah, I guess, so. I don't know why they need my audio, but whatever. Actually, um, you don't need a mouse for this, but it, uh, it gives you that disclaimer, and I'm using the right analog stick as a mouse. It loads up my GOG account on there, and then it's going to go ahead and send me right on in. And here we go. Truly amazing. It's amazing that it works at all, honestly. I mean, I've never been a huge fan of streaming gaming, but if you really have no other choice, right? I've got a nice PC for gaming. But if I didn't, and I had, if I really wanted to play Cyberpunk, I'm not playing on a PS4. I mean, this is great. I've, I've already got the $50 dongle. I've got a controller sitting around from my Xbox. Why not? All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is go into the settings and turn off the copyright music. So hopefully this um, 
<laughs> this won't get uh, me a copyright hit. Uh, so let's get that uh, disabling copyrighted music. Hopefully that'll keep me out of trouble. Now we're going to go ahead and continue the game that I was working on. I started a, a new game not that long ago. So I'm about four hours into the game. There's not a lot of uh, spoiler in here. There's a little tiny spoiler in terms of, of somebody you didn't know if you were going to see again later in the game. But other than that, uh, I try to stay away from anything mission-based. You can see it loads up very, very quickly. And by the way, being on a gaming PC, I can tell you this is what it feels like on my PC. So um, I'm going to, I don't even know why I tried to go to sleep there, but whatever. I see a little icon and I think it's something I can pick up, so I click. But if you look closely, uh, this looks really good. <laughs> it looks really smooth. There's uh, there's not a frame rate drop. Now, I know what you're thinking. It's like, yeah, well, I've seen videos of this part, and it looks fine. It's when you go outside that things get crazy. So let's um, let's run around outside. Oh, let's take this call. Yeah, this is the guy that uh, you probably weren't sure if you would see again or whose side he was on. So I apologize for the tiny bit of spoiler there, but I did warn you in the description. But I'm not going to really play this to actually play it. This isn't a video to show you how to play Cyberpunk. This is just so you can see what this $50 dongle is capable of streaming over if you've got nice, clean Wi-Fi, which I do. And uh, you have a nice router and nice infrastructure, which I do, because uh, I've hand-tooled my internal network to be as clean as possible for streaming VR. But take a look here. Uh, I'm running around. Look at the lighting. Look at the shadows. Look at everything. That's a normal part of the game, that little quivering thing that's going on. That's not something wrong with the game itself. It's supposed to do that. But as you can see, if you look around, and, uh, and I'll show you more, um, but if you're looking around at the lighting and the shadows, uh, the smoothness that I'm moving around, uh, we're not really... I should have probably turned the frame counter on. I apologize for not doing that. Um, but you can see there's some beautiful looking lighting and everything's nice and smooth and clean. This is probably overall even a bit smoother than my $1,800 gaming PC, which is pretty humbling actually to have that expensive of a PC and have a $50 streaming tool uh, showing me up a little bit. But these are the sorts of areas right in here where you start getting lots of people, density of people, that you start to see slow down if you're looking at the PC edition. And again, I'd like to point out a lot of the lighting and shadow. These are the sorts of things that, uh, that tend to be more dramatic if you're using ray tracing. And of course, it, it looks absolutely fantastic. Everything's sharp, the textures look great. Listen, I could use a little... Just wanted you to see just a little interaction going on. And then we're going to go outside here in just a minute and walk around where you really start seeing uh, suffering when it comes to uh, people density. And that's something you can turn down in the settings, right? There's a whole bunch of settings. Uh, Digital Foundry did a really nice video on settings you could use on your PC to make this game a little more palatable. But this is with no, no, no tweaks, no setting tweaks, nothing. This is literally Cyberpunk out of the GeForce Now box, if you will. And again, I did purchase this game already. I own it on GOG.com, DRM free, by the way, little plug there. And GOG is uh, perfectly acceptable to use within the GeForce Now infrastructure. So this was, uh, they, they promised this Cyberpunk 2077 day one on GeForce Now, and we got it. All right, so, so we're gonna get outside here with the population density. Just look at some of this lighting, look at that. I mean. The lighting is gorgeous. Look at the lighting of that stool we just passed. Roll back if you didn't see that. That's pretty cool. Um, but look at how the, how the sky is lighting certain areas of the screen. Digital Foundry did a really interesting video. One of their members did a nice video on how ray tracing works with lighting. Definitely worth your time to check that out. But you can see I'm outside and I'm not taking a huge hit. Now listen. It's not running at 120 hertz, you know what I'm saying? It's not 120 FPS. But if you've ever seen this on the PlayStation 4, if you've ever seen this on a lower-end PC, um, with everything turned up, this this looks great. Like I said, this meets or exceeds my 2080 Super RTX card running on an i7, a late-gen i7. And so I'm trying, to, I'm trying to keep the people moving. I'm trying to keep the environment moving. I'm trying to 
to show you things as we go along. Um, there's some nice organics here with the steam. Looks great. Unfortunately, you can't really see the lighting with that because it's a dark alley. But um, let's take a take a people mover and um, go to another location here just to just sort of show you the map for those of you who may not be familiar with uh, with all the different locations. So we're going to do a, a, a fast... Uh, I was going to do a fast travel, but I guess I decided against it. That's what happens when you record, uh, when you post-produce these videos. I tend to like to do them in real time, but I find that I have trouble playing effectively while I'm talking. Uh, benefits of an older age. But let's go outside. Here we go. Here's some good sunlight. Uh, look at look at the shadow. Look at the reflections off of that thing. That's just, that's nuts. So now we're going to go outside. You can see some glints off the cars. You can see uh, beautiful lighting going on out here. Reflections off the cars, reflections off the, off the pavement. Look at the shadows of the trees. Look at the shadows of the, um, the dividers. It's just, it's just really nice. It's really nice. And there's a little more steam diffusion. And again, I do not profess to be uh, amongst the great PC elite. I can't tell you the difference between this technology or that technology. But suffice to say, I think it runs really, really well. And considering that um, if you really are dying to play this game in some sort of a, a reasonable manner, it's uh, streaming for most people, even if you've got a really nice PC like me. So I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. Uh, I didn't, I mean, I could play game after game after game on here, but that's really what I wanted you to see. So um, I hope you enjoyed looking at this, how your Google TV can play GeForce Now, and you can play amazing high-end games like Cyberpunk 2077 without, uh, without breaking the bank or going crazy. This is Shane R. Monroe. I hope you enjoyed. Please like the video, click subscribe, and hit that little bell. Thanks always for watching. Take care.